patient decision-makes. So many, for many health decisions, there's not a correct decision. For example, if you're giving a biologic, there's a lot of choices out there. Many of them have equal efficacy, the difference from the size of the different costs, and for a patient to make those decisions is sort of hard. There's patient decision aids that sort of design to help patients with that process. So patient decision aids walks patients through the different options and it's evidence-based. Um, it sort of clarifies the values for the patient, it's sort of like what side effects are more important to them, cost is more important to them, and uh, it sort of prepares them for discussion with the rheumatologist later on. So I think better uh, patients that are here. Despite all these benefits, there's also a cognitive review that, that shows that you know, patients are less passive and patients are more sure of their uh, choice after the intervention. Despite all this, not many patient decisions are being used in practice. So my process is like, what are the barriers here? Uh, one of the ones that we sent a survey to all the members of the CRA, a third of them has applied. And of them, we took uh, 10 for qualitative interviews just for a more in depth look at the What we found was that people are sort of uh, about uh, using patient decision aids. About 5.7 out of 10 on the likelihood scale of using it. Um, most people say that we're not too familiar with it, or you know, we, we like to use it, but there's certain things that's preventing us from using it. One of the top barriers that we found was time. Almost everyone that we talked to has identified that as a barrier. Um, and just look at the first two quotes here. One of them says that, you know, I could give them a patient decision aid, but I don't have an appointment yet to come back and for me to explain it to them or look at the research. Other people just say that, you know, I'm just going to give them something. It's not really going to save me time because, you know, I still have to talk about it out. So that, so that, so because of these barriers, um, not many people are willing to use uh, uh, patient decision So through this research, we hope that you know we can clarify some of these barriers and make um, the current patient decisions more accessible, better design new ones. Hi. So what's the next step? So through our qualitative interview, a lot of new things actually came up. One of the important ones was that if you can hang on, you have time to read that big, big chunk. <laughs> the people are sort of on the edge about where I go. Our statistics are really important in patients. Some people say that, you know, I could, I could put a stat in there about how effective this thing is, but patients are going to misunderstand it. Or if I put it in there, they're not, they don't know what to do with it. Right? Some people say that patients can't really conceptualize risk. I can, I can tell them what the risk is, but they, they don't really know what it is. And, um, well, on the other side, some people say that putting a stat in a patient decision is really helpful. There's diagrams out there that's, that's better than what I can explain. Yeah. Right? So, so those are some, definitely some areas I can further explore. Great. Thank you so much, Jeff. Thank you.